Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. President Macron, Mrs. Macron, it is an honor to welcome you to the State Department. A titre professionnel, mais... Professionally, but also on a personal level, this is an honor for us to have you here. Be joined by my co-host for this lunch, the Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris. And also, and also the second gentleman, Doug Emhoff. It is only fitting that for the first state visit of the Biden-Harris administration, the United States is welcoming our oldest ally. This very week, in 1776, a bedraggled, exhausted, and very seasick American landed in France after a grueling month at sea. The Continental Congress had dispatched Benjamin Franklin, who looks out over us, our very first diplomat to find support for the American Revolution. Over the next year, Franklin and his counterpart forged America's very first alliance, and that, of course, proved vital to winning our nation's independence. Now, France, Mr. President, made quite an impression on Ben Franklin. Uh, before he went to France, he would extol the virtues of going to bed early. <laughs> then he went to Paris, and as he said, Wine is proof that God loves us and wants us to be happy. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that Franklin also left his mark on France, where he became something of a celebrity. His trademark fur cap even inspired a new wig style among French women, the coiffure à la Franklin. Now, it's also fair to say that no American diplomat since, and Henry Kissinger is here today, and I think he can attest to that, none of us have lived up to Franklin's legacy as a style icon. <laughs> but for more than two centuries, the United States and France have built upon the foundation of those early ties. And today, we are unwavering security allies, close economic partners, and most of all, cherished friends. I am one of the countless beneficiaries of those bonds. Living abroad in France taught me to see the world through another's eyes, something that I carry with me to this day. France welcomed me, educated me, inspired me. I doubt that I would be here if I had not gone there. It quickly taught me something that everyone in France knows, but as of yesterday, is now officially recognized by UNESCO. The French baguette is a global <laughs> cultural treasure. Now, as my mother, who is here today, can attest, I would probably add the pain au chocolat to that, <laughs> so maybe we can work on that. Uh, those years also gifted me with a lifelong love, love of soccer, or football, to use the correct word, and also the Paris Saint-Germain team. So while I couldn't be prouder to cheer on Team USA at the World Cup, I'm also thrilled to see Kylian Mbappe working his magic for Les Bleus. And Mr. President, thank you for keeping him in Paris. <laughs> Today, as both presidents said um, when they were together at the White House, we find ourselves in a consequential moment for both of our countries, but also for the world. The post-Cold War era is over, and we face a global competition to define what comes next. This is a challenge that we can best meet as friends, and for the United States, alongside our very first friend. Together, the United States and France are defending the international rules-based order that we helped to build after the Second World War. We're also working together to reform that order so that it better reflects the realities of today. We're supporting the people of Ukraine as they defend their nation and resist President Putin's attempt to redraw the borders of a sovereign, independent nation by force. We're working together to strengthen European security and advance a free and open Indo-Pacific. We're taking urgent steps to save our planet for future generations, which continues to be driven 
in large part by the agreement that was reached in Paris. We're also making investments in global health to stamp out diseases like malaria and HIV AIDS to build greater capacity to prevent and respond to future health emergencies. Mr. President, you've led on the world stage on all of these issues and so many more. But even as we think about the individual issues, it's also the vision that you bring to global leadership that is so exceptional. Your commitment to a stronger, better future for all has been a galvanizing force for all of us, for all of our partners. We could not do without it. We're grateful for it. Thank you. And Mrs. Macron, I want to salute you as well. You've been a beacon for so many families this year, particularly through your work on behalf of Ukrainian children when they so desperately need it. Thank you. The bottom line is this. It's hard to find a challenge that we can't solve if the United States and France work together. For in all that we do, our people and our nations are bound together by our core values of liberty and democracy, respect for human rights and the rule of law, the belief that all people should have a chance to reach their full potential. And that's exactly what Franklin saw when he went to France. He observed that the French saw, and I quote, our cause as the cause of all people, and that we are fighting for their liberty in defending our own. Those are values that continue to unite us today. That's the reason that your causes are ours and ours are yours. So I'd like to all ask all of you to join me in a toast to our common history, but also, if we have glasses. Ah, they're coming. Great, thank you. But also, also to our shared future. May the values that have brought us here continue to guide us for generations to come. Vive les États-Unis, vive la France. And now, it is my particular pleasure and honor to introduce the Vice President of the United States, Madam Vice President. Have a seat. President Macron, Mrs. Macron, Emmanuel and Bridget, on behalf of the administration, the American people, welcome to Washington. It is good to see you both again. And Doug and I, the, the first, second gentleman of the United States, thank you also for so warmly welcoming us when we were recently in France. I want to thank Secretary Blinken and Ms. Ryan for hosting us and co-hosting us today and for all that you do for our nation. And to our distinguished guests, Speaker Pelosi, uh, members of Congress, leaders from the American and French governments, the private sector and the arts, thank you all for all that you do for our nation and this very important relationship. In 1778, from Valley Forge, Marquis de Lafayette wrote to his wife, on the alliance between France and America, wherein he said, my heart has always been completely convinced that in serving the cause of humanity and America, I was fighting in the interest of France. Indeed, our long shared history has demonstrated the interests of America of France and of humanity are deeply interconnected. There is no greater example of this than when our troops fought and died together on the battlefields of the two world wars. Last year, Doug and I walked the solemn grounds of the Seren American Cemetery outside of Paris, the final resting place of thousands of Americans who answered the call to serve our common cause. President Macron, I joined you the very next day on Armistice Day 
to honor the tomb of the unknown soldier at the Arc de Triomphe. And yesterday, you visited our Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in Arlington. We will always honor the shared sacrifice of those who served and the freedoms they fought for, not only for the American and French people, but for millions of people around the world. And of course, our cooperation extends beyond the battlefield. Our connections span the arts and culture business and technology, and science and medicine. In each of these areas, our work together has benefited humanity. For example, French researchers at the Institut Pasteur first hypothesized in 1918 that influenza was caused by a virus. This discovery helped American scientists developed some of the first flu vaccines. In the 1960s, French researchers collaborated with American scientists at Caltech and Harvard to discover mRNA. This work led to a range of scientific advances, including in the 1980s, when my mother, Dr. Shamala Harris, a breast cancer researcher, traveled to Paris to partner with the legendary French professor Beaulieu. My mother and Professor Beaulieu ultimately published their findings, which identified a specific protein that is, in, is present in mammary glands that helps kill cancerous cells. The work that they did then is saving lives today. And of, <laughs> and of course, the mRNA discovery more recently led to life-saving COVID-19 vaccines to the benefit of people around the world. Indeed, it was my great privilege on my recent trip to France to visit Institut Pasteur and meet with Professor Beaulieu, who is well into his 90s. President Macron, President Biden and I are very proud to work with you to build on this very long and important history. You and I have had numerous meetings and phone calls together over the past two years. We have discussed and advanced our cooperation on security and prosperity in Europe, the Indo-Pacific, and Africa. We have worked together to support the people of Ukraine and to hold Russia accountable. And we have collaborated on issues including cybersecurity, climate, space, and global and gender inequality. And I have witnessed how your personal leadership has strengthened France's global leadership to the benefit, without any question, of the people of the United States and the people of the world. I thank you. As we move forward, the relationship between the United States and France will be guided by our shared history and our shared vision for the future. A future where international rules and norms are strengthened and upheld. A future where we seize the opportunities of space to meet the challenges here on Earth. A future where we tackle the climate crisis and protect the people of our planet and a future where we reduce global inequality. I thank you, Mr. President, for being an extraordinary champion of this shared vision. And so on the occasion of this first state visit of our administration, let us all remember the words of Lafayette, the fates of America and France are intertwined with each other and with all of humanity. So I offer a toast to our relationship and to those who have contributed to our long history of cooperation and to the billions more who will benefit from our future work together. Cheers. 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 Cheers.
And it is now my great honor to introduce President Emmanuel Macron. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Monsieur Kamala. Monsieur le Secrétaire d'État, cher Anthony. Thank you for us. Cher Doug, Miss Ryan. First, I, I do want to apologize because we, had a <laughs> we almost fixed everything. So you will see a lot of big changes in your life yes. in the coming hours and days. So this is uh, at least the argument I have to survive vis-a-vis -vis you for the coming minutes and hours. <laughs> now, thank you very much for your patience and sorry to make you wait. Let me first thank you, Tony, for welcoming us here and organizing such a wonderful lunch. And thank you once again, Ms. Vice President Kamala, for your friendship. And thanks to both of you for your words. Um, I have to say, both of you mentioned Lafayette, Benjamin Franklin. I could add to this list Jefferson and so many others who built this incredible links between our two countries. A lot of people ask President Biden, why did you choose President Macron to come for the first state visit? <laughs> Obviously, I'm not the one to answer this question. <laughs> but I can tell you why the US and France, definitely. I think because a lot of people in this world do believe sometimes we are too proud to self-confident and so on. But it's because both of us do believe that we can, and we are, in a certain way, in charge of universal values. And you just quoted this word from Lafayette. He had this in-depth feeling that he will fight for his own country yeah. and for liberty together. Mm -hmm. And when your soldiers came during the First and the Second World War, in our country, they had exactly the same feeling. And we will never forget that a lot of your families lost children on a soil they never knew before, just because they were fighting for liberty and for universal values. And I think this link in the current environment in our world is unique. And this is why I think we are here today, and I'm so proud to be here, indeed, with you. You're those to have a wonderful delegation. We have our ministers and a lot of uh, civil servants working hard on a daily basis for the bilateral relation. We have business leaders, and uh, we were very proud two days ago to have the first Franco-American business council, and I want to thank all those who contributed to the seventh. We have uh, a lot of uh, members of uh, our parliament on both sides, and we had a wonderful discussion yesterday with the caucus, and I will meet uh, representatives and senators <laughs> right after this uh, lunch, and I want to thank our delegation as well for that. You have uh, a lot of tech players, a lot of investors, a lot of people involved in culture, sports, because we are so much linked by all these circles, so much linked by the strength of creativity on both sides and our common ability to convey our faith in science and knowledge and our appetite for talents and creativity. And indeed, we have a lot of common work and common challenge together. We are very much engaged together to help the Ukrainians in this war and to resist to the Russian aggression. And I want to thank your country for the unique commitment and investment alongside the Ukrainian people and in great solidarity with the Europeans. 
And we are, as well, very much engaged for climate change, more solidarity in this world. We will work hard for this new partnership between North and South in the coming months. We are committed for climate and biodiversity, and yesterday we had a wonderful discussion for some initiatives regarding better conservation and, and protect our rainforests and our oceans. And what we have in common is precisely to work very hard for these values and to make them concrete for our people. We have huge challenges in our democracies because our, our middle classes do suffer. And the recent years and decades were so, so tough. And we see in our countries, almost everywhere, a sort of resurgence of hatred speech, racism, divisions. One way is to accompany this move and to be a demagogue. You decided not to do so. And I want to thank you for that. And we try to resist on our side as well to precisely deliver more and be efficient and provide concrete solution to our fellow citizens when we speak about health, when we speak about climate, when we speak about reindustrializing our country, when we speak about defense and security. And this is how our partnership has to work and deliver. And this is why this morning we had a very useful and fruitful discussion to work on, uh, on this issue. I was very happy as well to have very concrete discussion yesterday with you on space, and we are so proud of our astronauts and our common journey for today and the future. We had very good discussion on nuclear energy, on science and research, on quantic, and so many different fields. And tomorrow I will go to New Orleans with a wonderful delegation to speak about uh, green energy, climate change, culture, and francophonie, as I can <laughs> demonstrate it right now. <laughs> but I want to give you some time more, so I want to avoid translation. But we will clearly, as well, launch a new program for French language, and you're a perfect example, both of you, of this attachment for the French language. But I come from a country where everybody knows that gastronomy and a good lunch is part of diplomacy. <laughs> and a lot of people presented that Talleyrand was so successful because he was already with his cooker. And some people claim that, in fact, Talleyrand's cooker is the actual diplomat. <laughs> so I don't want to be longer. I want you to enjoy this lunch, because I think it's part of diplomacy. <laughs> and I, I think it's the best way to share a very good moment. But let me tell us that in these challenging times, this history and the friendship between the United States of America and France on both sides, it's part of our soul, mm -hmm. our roots, but as well, part of our future. Indeed. And I will be committed to deliver concrete results for our fellow citizens on both sides of the oceans in this context, thanks to this common history and committed to this common destiny. Thank you.